the Creality Ender 7, the finale. There you are, welcome back. So what is an Ender 7? It's 250 by 250 by 300 on Z or Z. It's got a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and it takes 1.75 millimeter filament. That nozzle will go to 260C. It's got a carborundum glass bed. The bed will go to 100C, blah, blah, etc. You don't care about that, I know. Can we just skip to the good part? There is features that the website lists. 250 millimeters per second, high speed printing. What? Via a Core XY motion system. Okay, that's cool. Linear rails on X and Y. That's cool. Custom high volume nozzle. Cool. Customized high power motors, high speed cooling fans, and I quote, direct from the website, high efficiency operational control algorithm. Your guess is as good as mine. My first experience with the Creality Ender 7 was via a live stream. This box, this Ender 7, heavy. I was sent the machine and essentially it's as if it didn't exist because no one else had one and it wasn't on any website. Chuck said, wait a minute, Ender 7, you got a machine that I haven't even heard of yet. In the email though, they did tell me it should print 250 millimeters per second which is substantial to say the least. And everybody on the live stream was very curious if it would actually do it. <laughs> it's so looking like garbage. It's, it's so terrible. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you saw it, you know, I could not get the Ender 7 to work reliably. Kind of crumbly. I just couldn't get the bed working and that live stream ended with sadness. We're done. <laughs> We're done. Creality, thanks for sending this to me. I'm sorry it didn't work. The next time you saw the Ender 7 is quite possibly my favorite. It was when I got my hands on an angle grinder. Let's do this. You see, when the front of the machine is on it, it's not easy to see it printing because the bed starts at about that level. So the front of the machine, in my humble opinion, had to go. And now at the time I didn't know about this, but when I performed surgery on the Ender 7, I used a grinding wheel rather than a cutoff wheel. And believe me, I heard about it in the comments. However, regardless of what wheel was on my angle grinder, we found success. And at the end of the episode, I showed you that the bunny that came as an example print on the SD card printed successfully. Now from here, there is an unaired episode of 3D Printing Nerd where there are prints from either machine and we do a comparison. You see, when I took the front of the machine off, armchair engineers from all over the world told me that I broke it, that I destroyed the harmonic balance of the machine, that I didn't know what I was doing. And two out of those three things are definitely incorrect. You are technically correct. The best kind of correct. The main concern was that people said it needed that front part of the machine for rigidity to be able to print and to be able to sustain the 250 millimeters per second that the promised goal was. No, it doesn't. It really, really doesn't. It does not. Look at the Voron. There are Vorons that don't have that piece and they can sustain high speed 3D printing. So for everyone that said that, you're wrong. Creality did send another Ender 7 factory direct and it was that machine that we put against this machine here to do those print comparisons that were never aired. But let me just set the stage for you. Ender 7 retail version, Ender 7 3DPN edition. It was time to fight. So get this, we filmed an entire episode where prints were compared from either machine. We used essentially the same G-code and the same filaments and the machines were plugged into the same power on the same table. We got it as close as we could to do comparisons. And then when that was all done in that unaired episode, I put two in front of you, one right after the other, just so to see if you could tell the difference. So just so you know, you couldn't tell the difference. I swear to you. And that episode 
came out super duper boring, which is why we never aired it. But just so you know, print after print after print after print after print after print just looked the same from either machine. And it just reinforced the wrongness of the armchair engineers from around the world that said it needed that front piece. So you're just extra wrong. Don't sass me. Now our story weaves into a bit of pop culture because we have a massive Power Rangers Megazord episode planned. It's morphin' time! And we have lots of machines printing lots and lots of parts. These two machines were enlisted to help print parts for this massive project. Parts from both machines were consistently suboptimal. Bed adhesion was bad on both machines, no matter the material that we used. And for both machines, we had to enlist bed adhesion helpers, such as Magic Goo and Glue Stick. And then at some point during the print process, we moved to a new studio. And then printing resumed on these machines. And the thinking was, perhaps the new studio will inspire these machines to do a better job and to, to have the parts stick to the build plate. Nope. So for the Megazord project, all parts printed on these Ender 7 machines had to be reprinted on Prusa Mark III machines. And the new parts look fantastic. So where do we stand? As a studio and as someone with a print farm now, both of these machines have been taken out of service. No more content is to be created with them. The quality from these machines just isn't consistent, no matter what we try. It's nice having these here available to utilize if we do need something 3D printed, but because the quality cannot be consistent with these machines, it's just not worth investing the time in printing things on these machines. One of the places here that Creality really missed the mark is some sort of auto bed leveling for the Ender 7. It would have at least hopefully brought some consistency to my 3D printing experience with both of these, or at least give it, uh, given it a more refined experience when printing, because many times the bed had to be adjusted, and that sucks. And when you look at the price tag, 700 US dollars, it's more of a premium price, but the printer doesn't deliver on a premium experience. This doesn't feel like a finished product. It feels more like a platform for tinkerers or people that want to hack at things. So based on my experience with the Ender 7 and the most likely thousands of hours that I've put both of them through, I don't know the audience these are made for. Now we're left with a system that can print pretty fast, but a system that doesn't hold on to the prints. And that's kind of where it really matters because you can throw filament as fast as you want, but if it ain't gonna stick, then all you're gonna have is loads of spaghetti. It's just unfortunate that at $700, this is what you're getting. I think either deliver the premium experience that the premium price tag suggests or lower the price so that it opens the doors to more people who want to tinker and upgrade and remake. There you go. That's the Ender 7 here on 3D Printing Nerd. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for cause you believe in, and print all the things. And as always, high five.